Sometimes, you want to indicate the direction a player needs to go in order to get an item, see an enemy, or achieve a goal. And what better way to do that than to have an arrow that points in that direction? So I've made an arrow here that points at the cylinder mesh, our enemy, and no matter where the player node is, or in what direction the player node turns, it will always point toward our enemy mesh. I've included a character controller to move our player node. If you want an explanation as to how this works, please see Garbage, since I believe I stole this code from one of his videos. Before we can successfully rotate the arrow, we need to change its rotation point. The rotation point is the axis on which the arrow will rotate. Currently, the rotation point is put at an optimal position. But if you want to change it, all you have to do is go up to here, click that icon, and now you can set the rotation point. I'm going to undo this to put the rotation point back to its original position. Looking at the script, this block of code right here is what's actually rotating our arrow. It rotates the arrow depending on the relative direction the player is to the enemy mesh and the direction the player is facing. So the player will always know the direction in which the mesh is located. This works with multiple enemies as well. If I go over here and duplicate my enemy, space them out a little bit, save and then run our scene, you can see that the arrow snaps to the closest enemy node. Now how this works is that I've set each enemy node to be a part of the detectable group. And if we look back at our script, this code right here grabs all of the nodes that are in the detectable group and compares their distance to the player. And after going through each node, it will find the node that's closest to the player and assign that node to our nearest node variable. And going back to the code that rotates the arrow, you can see that we've added the nearest node as a factor, and this will allow us to grab the angle at which our player node is from the nearest node. Additionally, the arrow color indicates how close the enemy is to our player. The deeper the red, the closer the enemy. But you might also want your arrow to point at other things like resources, items, goals, etc. If I close out this window and then delete these two enemy mesh nodes for simplicity, and then add an item object to the item spatial, and a resource object to the resources spatial, you can see that I have two more meshes on our scene. And each of these meshes belongs to the detectable group. That way, our arrow will be able to find these meshes. So if we save and run our scene, the arrow will point to our new meshes. The code block that controls the arrow's color is right here. The arrow's color changes depending upon the parent of the nearest node. So if it finds enemy as being the nearest node, it'll check the parent, match it to here, and then execute this code. In this case, this will be red, this will be blue, and the resources will be green. Additionally, so you don't have any issues with your arrow or your arrow's position when resizing the window, you will need to go to your project, project settings, get that out of here, go to display, window, scroll all the way down, go to stretch, and set your mode to either being 2D or viewport. That way, whenever you resize your screen, your arrow will follow your player's body. Exiting out of that window, you can save our scene again, go to world. And what I really like about this is that it, it even works in orthographic view. So if we run the scene, go to inspector, world, camera select, change that to orthogonal. And now we have a top-down view. 
and it works all just the same, for the most part that is. We can even rotate it with keys Q and key E. And the arrow in orthogonal view is actually a separate arrow altogether. This arrow right here. And it hovers directly over our player and body, which is set to the camera pivot origin of the scene. We even have a zoom in, zoom out feature that adjusts the arrow's scale relative to the camera size. Of course, it's not perfect because the camera size doesn't actually scale linearly, but it's close enough. Well, that's just about all there is to it. You can download this project from GitHub by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggested improvements, please leave them in the comments. Have a wonderful day.